the legislation would put the squeeze on gun owners, introducing a firearms registry, tighter licensing rules and stronger penalties. National is opposing it, as laid out by MP Brett Hudson at last night's second reading. It does nothing about genuine criminal activity in gangs and does everything about layering cost, administrative burden, regulation on people that already follow the rules. And he says the experience of other countries challenges government claims about the benefits of a national registry. The evidence out of Australia, which has had a registry for many a year, was that uh, in homo- the case of homicides, 90% of those involving firearms, the firearms are not registered. So the, the register is not keeping firearms out of the hands of criminals. The Greens' Chloe Sprawbrick told Parliament even limited information gathered through a registry would have a massive impact. For solving crimes, for preempting and stopping crimes from happening in the first place. Uh, and had we done this over 20 years ago, then we may be in a much better position than we are now with the unknown uh, 1.5 uh, million odd guns out there at present. The position taken by National and ACT was called out by the Minister Stuart Nash, who said for the first time the fit and proper person test for a licence excludes gang members and associates. I refuse to be the former minister approached by victim's family in 20 years' time and ask. Why didn't you change the law? Why didn't you take guns off gangs and bring in tougher penalties for gun crime? These are the questions that will haunt Simon Bridges and David Seymour instead. New Zealand First supported the second reading but is not satisfied with the bill as it is. MP Ron Mark told Parliament an independent arms authority should be set up to administer firearms law. That takes that statutory responsibility, thus leaving the police to one side to simply enforce the law, just as NZTA issue the driver's licences, determine the testing regime, decide who's fit and proper to have a driver's licence. He later told reporters New Zealand First supports getting assault rifles off the streets. But there is a strong view that people who have been participating in a legitimate sport, who have been vetted appropriately, deemed to be fit and proper, should be allowed to continue that. Mr Mark was asked whether his party would support the bill in its current form. No, I wouldn't say that. New Zealand First has got, uh, caucus has expressed some concerns and those concerns have been addressed in, in accordance with the ways, uh, the procedures and the protocols laid down in the coalition agreement and some conversations are best had directly uh, with the ministers responsible and that's where they should remain. In Parliament this afternoon, Andrew Little, speaking on behalf of the minister, talked down any possibility of exempting sports shooters. There is no intention to change the policy on that particular point at the moment, but unless that member has something constructive to add, that's going to add to the the safety regime around firearm ownership, then this government is all ears. The Council of Licensed Firearms Owners says it's clear the law as written now is not a done deal and is encouraging its members to lobby New Zealand first before the bill passes. The next stage of the bill is committee stage, where amendments can be made with majority support in the House. From Parliament for Checkpoint, Jane Patterson.